Hey there guys! So, in today's first installment of this new chapter here on the Stargate My Vlogs, I thought I would do a little series, a little something each week, where I talk about a particular album, whether it be on vinyl or digital or both, if the case may be. Something that's uh, really intriguing me for this week, something that's uh, keeping me coming back, keeping me listening, and talk about it with all of you, why I find it so intriguing and fascinating and uh, play a little a little clip of it uh, here courtesy of uh, whatever particular system I'm using for that particular day give you all a little bit of a sample and why and kind of just give you an example of why I enjoy uh, this particular piece of music as much as maybe all of you should if it's up your alley so in today's installment I thought I would present the following Inside Lewin Davis. Now, what is Inside Lewin Davis, you ask? Well, for those of you who are not yet aware at this particular point in time, and given the fact that it is only in select theaters, you may not be so aware of it. Inside Lewin Davis is the, uh, the latest movie effort of the Coen brothers, to start off with. And unlike some of their prior fare, which definitely navigates a lot of twistedly quirky ends, to say the least, Inside Lewin Davis is sort of a, a loose portrayal of some of the 1960s folk scene. Uh, Lewin Davis himself, uh, albeit being a fictional character, is loosely based off of uh, old folk master, folk artist, however you wanna, whatever you want to call him, uh, Dave Von Ronk who uh, was a Brooklyn-born uh, you know, Brooklyn folk musician uh, who lived in the Greenwich Village scene. And while he never really rose to the prominence and significance of his fellow folk artists, for example, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, a lot of other folk people who came through that particular scene, he was always very well thought of as one of the elder statesmen of that particular movement. And while in Lewin Davis here, the fictionalized account really does uh, differ from Von Rong personality-wise. They really do make a fine effort to cover some of the songs Von Rong was known for. And they've gotten a great relative newcomer. I don't know him very well myself, so I could be a little bit inaccurate in making that statement. In Oscar Isaac here, who plays Lewin Davis who, of course, because they wanted to make this as authentic as possible in the movie, uh, they got all real musicians and actors, which made it a very rigorous process. So when you see and hear the music for this film, it is all being played and sung by the actors in the movie. Oscar Isaac is fantastic in the role, really makes the music what it is. And unfortunately, I've only really gotten this from the soundtrack perspective because I have not yet seen the film. But from everything I've heard, it sounds really, uh, really fantastic. And uh, the music is no exception. The Coen brothers have collaborated with uh, T-Bone Burnett. And largely from what I've heard and from what I can tell from hearing it myself, it is one of the best soundtracks that uh, T-Bone Burnett has been involved with since Oh Brother Where Art Thou. And even though this one hasn't been discussed as much, uh, the Jeff Bridges film Crazy Heart. Now on the back here to just sort of give you a brief run through, uh, a lot of this of course is music with Oscar Isaac, but there are great collaborations with Marcus Mumford from Mumford and Sons, which is a sample uh, of the song that you'll be hearing here in a little bit. There is collaborations with Justin Timberlake, definitely silence what you think about Justin Timberlake and his style of music until you hear what he brings to songs like uh, Please Mr. Kennedy and especially what he brings to 500 Miles with uh, Carrie Mulligan and Stark Sands. Because that song just absolutely blows me away. But in addition to, to, those, to those ones as well, there's some uh, traditionals, uh, traditional songs as well. There's a lot of traditional songs actually, considering when all these were written. Uh, there's a great Irish traditional song called The Old Triangle, 
which is nothing more than a cappella and great uh, harmony sections with Marcus Mumford with Justin Timberlake apparently taking his famous falsetto voice to the bass part of the song so ruminate on that for a bit and even uh, a an unheard version of the Bob Dylan song farewell so really in addition to being a movie to check out it's a great soundtrack to check out I couldn't recommend it more highly and on that note let us phase to a different part of the story here and we will now go to a cut of Oscar Isaac singing with Marcus Mumford on the the old song, the old traditional, uh, as I said, many of these songs are old old songs, uh, old traditional style songs. Uh, the song Fare Thee Well, uh, Dink's song, which has been covered by quite a few, quite a few artists over the years, but this is uh, definitely one of the best versions. So without further ado, here we go. <laughs> Interesting to lead off with a soundtrack, but this is definitely one of the best individual soundtracks I've heard in a long time. Great, just beautiful folk music. I can't recommend this more highly um, and how many times I've not only played it uh, digitally or on my turntable, but it's even gotten me to the point that I've looked up tabs to play the, play some of these songs on guitar, like, uh, like Fare Thee Well, which you just heard and uh, Hang Me, Oh Hang Me, uh, which is another Von Rong song. And it just, it, I can't wait to see the movie. I'm super psyched about it. Definitely go and pick this up today. And I thank you guys all for watching. But until next time, I'll see you all very, very soon.